from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 25th, 2021. Israel's Minister of Diaspora Affairs, Dr. Nachman Shai, is heading to Florida right after Shabbat to provide any help and support following the devastating collapse of a 12-story residential building in Surfside yesterday morning, an area known to have a large Jewish population. Shai tweeted that as of Saturday, I will be representing the government in the Florida disaster scene. I will accompany the community closely and ensure that the Jewish community in general and at the scene of the disaster in particular, will receive the full assistance required from the State of Israel. Search and rescue teams continue to look for the over 150 people still missing, 34 of them said to be Jewish. Four people are known dead at this time from the collapse and dozens are injured. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett said our foreign ministry representatives in Miami and Israel are doing everything possible to assist and address the situation. Bennett said the entire nation of Israel prays for the safety of those injured and missing in the disaster. From here, he wrote, we send support to our brethren in the Jewish community in particular and to all Florida residents in general and express our sorrow during this tragic event. Alternate Prime Minister and Israel's Foreign Minister Yair Lapid said, I am following the situation closely and spoke to our Consul General, Maor el Dorinsky, who is at the scene. The Israel Foreign Ministry will do everything it can to support our team on the ground and all those affected by this tragedy. El Dorinsky, by the way, posted photos with the local United Hatzalah team with whom he said, we arrived at the scene and haven't left since. And United Hatzalah Israel, in partnership with El Al Israel Airlines, is sending its psychotrauma and crisis response unit to Florida. President and founder Eli Be'er, who just over a year ago received life-saving care at the University of Miami Hospital when he was critically ill with the coronavirus, said as soon as the collapse occurred, we began making preparations for the mission to depart. The air said when we contacted El Al about the possibility of having this mission, they were eager to help and decided to fully sponsor the flights for the team. With a recent resurgence of coronavirus cases in Israel as of late, blamed on the Delta variant, believed to have been brought into the country by Israelis not adhering to quarantine regulations when they returned to Israel, the government has now decided to reinstate the indoor mask mandate that had been lifted just about two weeks ago. The health ministry said the renewed regulations took effect at noon today also telling Israelis to wear masks at large outdoor gatherings. Well, new legislation from Poland is stirring outrage. 309 members of Poland's lower house of parliament voted in favor last night of a law that would set a 30-year deadline for Jews to recover property seized by the Nazis during the Holocaust, basically preventing any restitution claims by Holocaust survivors. There were zero votes against the law and 120 abstentions. Israel's president, Reuven Rivlin, had written a letter to Polish President Andrzej Duda earlier this week, expressing his deep concern over the legislation. Foreign Minister Lapid called the legislation immoral. He wrote, I have no intention of remaining silent in the face of this law. This, he said, is a direct and painful violation of the rights of Holocaust survivors and their descendants, vowing that the horrors and memory of the Holocaust would not be erased. And Jewish Congressman Ted Deutsch echoed the sentiment, writing, Justice cannot have an expiration date. This backward move by the Polish parliament will make it harder or impossible for survivors and descendants to make restitution claims on property stolen during the Holocaust. I urge the Polish government to withdraw this shameful bill. 
The bill still needs to be approved by the Polish Senate before it can become law. And responding to reports claiming a change in the new U.S. administration's position on the Golan Heights, Lapid shared a tweet today from the U.S. State Department affirming that this was not the case. The Washington Free Beacon had published a piece yesterday with the title, Biden Admin Walks Back U.S. Recognition of Golan Heights as Israeli Territory. That report was then picked up by Israeli media. In response, Lapid shared a tweet from the State Department of Near Eastern Affairs affirming that U.S. policy regarding the Golan has not changed and reports to the contrary are false. Lapid later said the United States has recognized our sovereignty over the Golan Heights and its strategic importance to Israel's security. He wrote anyone who spreads rumors about the revocation of this recognition harms security, harms the declaration of sovereignty, and is willing to cause real damage to the state of Israel. Over 30 children and teenagers from around the world are in Israel this month for life-saving heart surgery through the Israeli humanitarian organization Save a Child's Heart. Executive Director Tamar Shapira told the Times of Israel we haven't had a group like this, referring to the amount of kids and the many countries they come from since the beginning of COVID. The children hail from Ethiopia, Tanzania, Nigeria, Kenya, Kosovo, Uganda, and Zambia, as well as from the Palestinian Authority and from Gaza. Save a Child's Heart has treated over 5,600 children from 62 countries since being founded in 1995. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, June the 25th, Live Shabbat services are coming up from New York City's Central Synagogue, followed by Shabbat services from the Hampton Synagogue. At 8.30, it's Pharaoh's Daughter in Concert. At 9, it's the film The Pin, a love story in the shadow of the Holocaust in Yiddish with English subtitles. At 10.30, it's a replay of the Hampton Synagogue services, followed by an encore presentation from Central Synagogue. And coming up next, it's a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 25th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well, and Shabbat Shalom.